Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, the Duff Dog and I and Chin and the Mopar Madman and Mojo and whoever else decides to show up today and look over my shoulder is it, it's gonna see if we can't get a 1974 Mercury Bismarck Key running for the first time since 1991. So that's 33 years. Picked this thing up at a sale like two years ago outside Aberdeen. And uh, it's been sitting rotten away ever since. And Pole Barn Garage Dalton keeps dragging these things home. So I figure we should get this one running and, and maybe he can come get this one too, because I don't need it. It's got a hideaway headlight. Uh, Brown County, three plates. It used to be much more visible until I shoved around with a bobcat. Hood ornament's missing. Yeah, it's, it's brown. It's big, big brown. That's what it's gonna be. I think these are five on five bolt pattern. There's, there's definitely only two lug nuts and they're not across from each other, holding that wheel on, so I wanna address that. No antennae, looks like she was a vinyl top. Still solid, might not wanna do that there. Looks like a little rubbing was going on here. Oh, he didn't slam you, he didn't bump you, he didn't nudge you, he rubbed you. And rubbing son is racing. Oh yeah, this thing's good. I'm guessing it's got a modified in it? Might be 460. Who knows? It's an Urk here. The back bumpers on these things were made out of something slightly thicker than tin foil and uh, more corrosive. So they always fall off. It's missing our cover for the trunk lid. Spaulding's in Aberdeen, sold or new. Those things are neat. I wish they still made them out of metal. Anywho, ooh, rear defrost. I pumped up two tires. I guess I should have pumped up three. It's also missing keys, so we can't get it out of park and can't steer it. Power seats, power windows, tilt. I'm sure it's got AC, all the bells and whistles. Oh my, what about this key right here? Is that a lock for the hood? Or is that a lock for the park brake? I don't know, either way. Ranchero! That's probably worth more than the rest of the car. Came with some extra wheels. No, no, never mind. I bought those on the auction and we just threw them in here. Yep, you could see that they were uh, item number four. All right. Well, you guys get to work. I'm gonna sit back and watch. I think this thing is a 74. I think I got a title for it even. It's 12 of 73. Yep, 74. We're gonna get her done. We're, I'm gonna get it running just so you have to take so it I home. have to drive it home. Because I really thoroughly enjoy this car duff's out playing in the mud so we got to figure out how to get this hood open ourselves did it go nice so you're saying there's a chance so you're telling me there's a chance i can tell that somebody's pride here by the dents. i thought it went it did. oh oops there must be a secondary. Clearly this was a design flaw from the factory and that's why somebody knocked a hole in the grill to get out of this. That's a screwdriver! What? Yeah, we're definitely... Are you pulling out on that? Is it... Is it got a... a three... three stage no. latching system? This is 1974. People oh, were just learning how to steal stuff back then. So this is dumb. World's, Great content. World's shortest Willie run is a game of the You know what we need? A bigger bar. I keep hearing the, the bar slip off and thinking that he got it. No. Uh, let's just go ahead and never close this again. And we're going to need a radiator. Looks like people figured out how to steal that. I feel like we got this open once before because I remember the alternator missing. Is there an alternator like on the passenger seat? Nope. Nope. Well. Antenna, no. Oh, the antenna. Sweet. Looks like somebody got, oh, I do remember getting the hood open and stealing the, the vacuum plug. I think we used that on the snutch rocket. Soup, soup cans galore. I was just gonna. Campbell's is your friend. Looks like the wiper was built 
November 29th of 73. So that was a couple year carryover, or one year anyway. You gonna see if she turns? Oh, oh. Light green. so you're saying there's a chance. This, one, this one's gonna go. A, that one's gonna go. How is your knuckles? So, what is this? Clean off this uh, cover thinger. Be a 460. I don't know. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. It's a 460. Oh, it is. Oh my gosh. They're like the greatest Ford engine ever. Just ask the 460 people. Clean, I bet the air cleaner lid says it. Right there. 4V. Did they make a 2V 460? Uh, that I don't that know. would seem really silly. I've never seen a two barrel 454. But Odds? Odds? It's going to go. Oh, it's like brand new. Oh, well. Consider this one done. We're going to have to do What's some next? pressure washing and dancing to make content out of this. Oh, one, two, one, two, three, not it. Can you do some uh, skateboard tricks? With, do some tech tech Ooh. tricks? Do you, have some, do you have some tech tech video of you back in the day? I don't, sorry. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to have to make some new stuff. <laughs> I'll have to dig them up. Make some new content. Yeah, power steering, power brakes, pretty much low to the hill. Cruise? I love the old cruises with the uh, toilet plunger oh, yeah, the ball, <laughs> chain. The ball, chain. The ball and chain. Other than, we're gonna, we'll have to cobble a radiator in there. Yeah. I love how they cut the radiator hose, but at least they didn't cut the tranny cooler lines. Could just bypass We, we can just loop those. Yeah. We could probably just loop the radiator hoses too. Oh, they took that one off. So we don't have to find a flexi hose for the upper radiator hose. Oh, that one they did cut. Of course they did. Or the mice did. No, they definitely cut it. The mice took the radiator too, didn't they? Maybe the mice stole it. Bible. They ruined everything today thus far. Yeah, they have really wrecked this day. Hopefully it's got that Ford power steering line. Man. So much good stuff. All right, who's our battery sponsor this week? Is this an air box? Give me that light. Cold air intake. Look at that shielded battery box. They don't want your battery getting too hot. Is that a belt or is that a hose? It's a hose. It's a hose. Vacuum hose, in fact. Wow. It's a good thing they didn't make the rest of the battery tray out of plastic. I've never seen that before though, where they shielded the oh. battery from everything else. Balls Capone's the battery sponsor this week. You too can be a battery sponsor at Wordsky.com. How's the, oh yeah, no mouse house in there. How oh, somebody stole our, our shaft for the air cleaner. We got shafted. We'll just file that away under CS over there with Mopar Valley pans. File that under uh, CS over there. Yes, what's that stand for? Chicken. Red goes on the plus, and the vice grip goes on that side. Okay, start it. It's even got the little notches to run the uh, cables through. Yeah, you don't want to slam it in the hood. It's pretty good. Everything's good in the hood. Wee! -oo. All right, where's that ground go? Should we just put a new ground on it? Sounds like a good idea. I feel like there's one right at my toolbox. Yeah, that one will do. Just kidding, not long enough. Son of a biscuit. Well, since we don't have keys, we're definitely going to need a loser switch. This is like the most complicated loser switch I've ever seen. So many wires. But there's only one terminal. There we go. Oh, this has got, what's for? Duraspark? Is that what they call it? Durr. Let's see if you can find somebody saying Durr. Yeah! I like how we have a whole toolbox full of ratchets, ratchets, ratchet wrenches. Are we in a hurry? French fried potatoes. I didn't know we were in a hurry. Shrimp salad. We're in a hurry. Shrimp kebabs. The inter the internet shrimp amazing. soup. Shrimp and potatoes. This is a week. Shrimp on the cob. Yeah. Shrimp pull boy. Oh my gosh, what is that? What is this? What is this wisdom tool that you speak of? Oh my gosh, the speed of that thing. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. Oh. What are you doing? You're ruining this channel. We don't tighten battery cable ends around here. How are we gonna get it off if a car starts on fire? Again, not my problem. I thought this was gonna be easy. 
Hmm. Now what? It's a Ford. I don't know how to do Ford things. I don't know how to work on Ford starters. Uh-oh. Flathead Fords. These overhead valve. This is like basically the late model equivalent of a Y block. That's the only one it can be, right? It's the only terminal. I think so. What size is that speed wrench you got there? Half. Do you do you have one of them? Nine sixteenths. I don't know. Wrenches do of wrenches of speed. Do I? Of course you do. Of course I do. Wow, that is a lot of wiring going on there. So this one almost might be an application for a. Is that a scotch clip? No, it's a fusible link. It's a, how did you know that it was a fusible link? Because it says fusible link. Could be. 20 gauge. And that's the tag that they all have. Look at all the blue paint on that engine. Somebody's rebuilt this thing, guaranteed. Look at the blue overspray on everything. Oh, a rattle can rebuild. Rattle can rebuild? Like there's another kind? There's one where you actually take an engine apart and replace it or fix it. What is this? posture you speak of we take them apart how else are you gonna get the paint to stick <laughs> how did it get worse it's like i'm cursed it doesn't work to tap these like if you do a it doesn't it can go east west or north so many options <laughs> Oh. oh, hey, it's got oil in it. It does. It's going to run for sure. It's below add, but hey. I don't know that it was below add. It's, it's within, it's in the operating range. It's in the I don't blow up stage. Is this battery good? I don't know. We just had it in the last car. That, <laughs> that didn't work. It worked fine. That sounds pretty weak to me. You're weak. You're don't know. <laughs> You're just... uh, that's so funny. The last time I heard that, I laughed so hard I fell off my dinosaur. <laughs> okay. Jumper box it is. Yeah, means well, I guess. I suppose we could clean up this battery cable. Maybe. Would that be a terrible idea? It's none of it's a bad idea. I can't have nice things. So now what? Should have invited the Ford experts over today instead of the editing and Mopar experts. <laughs> I don't consider myself an expert whatsoever. Is there dome lights or anything? Yeah, the door light. The door light? Well, then it should start for sure. Yeah, try turning the key. <laughs> Heavy on the dirt. This is dumb. This is clicking really hard. What's this? Oh, this is, hey, this is 77. Isn't that the one year that you had the push button? What is, what the French is that thing? Was it, what year know. did they have like the starter bypass thing? 74, that's the same as that Camaro. There's a button. Does that have to be hooked up or no? What is this button? It's for the NOS? What oh, says start? Oh, is that so you could start it from under the hood and not get your mullet in the fan blade? Well, yeah, and we're bypassing the neutral safety switch, plus the shift indicator shifter's in park. What are you doing, just ripping wires off? The... Looking for broken wires, looking for anything. Well, it's this is the, the heavy wire going to the uh, battery. That's the only one we should need. Yeah, I think you, I think you had to have like a seatbelt buckle to start the car or something in 74. Oh, really? And this would bypass it? Something, it was something weird. I saw that under the hood and yeah, and, and this is a 74, just like that red Camaro. Don't you own any 74s? Actually I do, I guess. Greedy, Greedy doesn't have any. Maybe it was only on cars too, I don't know. Oh, I could be. But yeah, that Camaro definitely had it and then I ran into it on another car. Do you have another solenoid laying around? Well, duh. You gotta have Ford all, solenoids around. All good Ford guys do, right? Yes, even even me. All right, we're going up in the air and we're gonna look at a starter. 
Keep on keeping on. We'll see if we can get her running without you. Really appreciate your help. <laughs> you got dirty and your flashlight's on. Keeping you bright. Oh, it looks like the uh, Ford used like a big chunk of rubber for the shock bumper things. Looks like our Ooh. vacuum canister is Ooh. rusted. Oh, that's for the headlights. Don't worry about that. That's fine. Good thing I pushed it up here and pulled it up here with the front bumper. Yeah, that's the vacuum canister oh. for the yeah. headlights. Perfect. I like how everything, you know, everything's stamped steel and nice. And then the, the front bumper brackets are just like C-channel and flat iron. Yeah. Disc brakes, I guess 74, not surprising. Oil pan's not rusted through, uh, but there is some water dripping off of it. So hopefully it's not full of water. Sway bar, radius rods, coil spring. Oh, what is that? Blue oil filter. Check for leaks. I don't know. Single exhaust, single drive shaft. I think these are nine inch rear axles. So if nothing else, we got a super tall ratio nine inch. What's that say? 275s. Perfect. Highway cruisers. Yep. Got a pinion leak. Imagine that. Fuel tank isn't leaking yet. Coil spring cars. A little rust in the quarters. Oof, the, the bumper bracket. <laughs> There's that rubber I was talking about. You never want a blown out rubber like that. Oh, it's split wide open on this side. Yuck. Trunk floor is good. Floor pans are a little, a little rustier on them wires there. Other than that, pretty good. Frame solid, rockers are solid. Oh yeah. I would imagine it's a C6, but I don't know anything about Ford transmissions. It's an automatic. It's gotta be a C6 buying a 460, wouldn't you think? I don't know what other option they had. Oh, this thing's got a starter solenoid on it. And it looks shiny. What the French? How do you have a solenoid on the inner fender and a solenoid on the starter? You come look. It's got to be a solenoid. Here you go. Take a take a peeper for yourself. Hmm. Sure looks like a solenoid to me. Only the one wire going to it. Right? Yeah. What the French? Can we jump it there? Is there a little lug on top? Yeah, there is, but <laughs> but you're not going to have power to this until that solenoid up there is going. Yeah, I suppose it's got to run through there. Bypass that one and jumper this one. Right. Well, I'll we'll figure something out. Yes. It's basically an airplane we've concurred because there's a brake booster right there. Kelsey Hayes. And there's also a brake booster on the firewall. And there's a solenoid on the inner fender. And then there's a solenoid on the starter. We interrupt your regularly scheduled shenanigans to bring you this Mortski Minute, sponsored by no other than Mortski.com. Check them out for the greatest and latest merch. We got caps, we got beanies, we got sweatshirts, we got koozies, we got decals, we got banners, we got magnetic screwdrivers. You name it, we got it. If we don't got it, you don't need it. Today's Mortski Minute is coming from the 36 Ford Studios. And today's Morski Minute is on the Sure Track. Yeah, that's right. In this video, I found this handy dandy little brake booster over by the starter on this Mercury Grand Marquis. And I thought, why would this car have two brake boosters? And then I found that it's got a wheel speed sensor or a speed sensor on the pinion of a Ford 9 inch. Why would it have that? Sure Track. Ford released the Sure Track as an option in 1969 in the Lincoln Mark III, and the Ford Thunderbird is a $195 option. They offered it in other models later on, but 1969, it was only an option on the Thunderbird and the Lincoln Mark III. It was become standard later as ABS. The first four-wheel ABS came out in 1971, not by Ford, but by Chrysler or the Imperial division. On the 1971 Imperial and was called Surebrake, which was a $351 option, which was a lot. 
because I was only a $6,000 car. Originally, ABS came from the aircraft industry. It was uh, originally invented for the Concorde line of aircrafts. Uh, so based on, based, you know, the military. It came from the military, the air industry. Also, where seatbelts came from, your worthless information of the day. And not because I wanted to keep the cockpit people, the pilots, to keep the pilots from uh, flying out of the machine in crashes because... Let's not talk about that. It was for uh, aerial maneuvers. They didn't want them flying around inside the cockpit in aerial maneuvers. What a fun word to say, cockpit. Anyway, back to the sure track. By 1971, it was no longer an option. It was standard. And you wonder, where was GM at in this? Well, in 1971, GM came up with the Trackmaster, which was also rear wheel only, uh, and it was an option on the Cadillac rear wheel drive cars and the Oldsmobile Tornado. Tornado, front wheel drive, the more you know. And that's about all I could find on the old Surebreak. It was a collaboration between Ford, Texas Instruments, and Kelsey Hayes, as you've seen. Uh, Texas Instruments kind of ran the computer, the controls, the, the digital side of things, and Kelsey Hayes ran the uh, braking side of things. And Ford just gave him a spot to put it all. So there you go. Your worthless information of the day brought to you by Mortski.com. Now back to your regularly scheduled shenanigans. All right, we got to take that bolt out up there, one on the bottom. Looks like just two bolts. Ford's pretty good about that. We'll just, <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. And the end. All right, what is that, half inch? You want one of them half inch speed wrenches? It's probably on the firewall of the car. I'll get the bottom one. You get the top one. Sure. Oh, can't get a speed wrench on it. Dig that one. So let's use the open end, round it off. You know, we Man. have feed wrenches around here and we have all of this stuff around here. You know what's bad for your teeth? Smarting off? Bricks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could see that happening. I would concur. Do you concur? Concur with what, sir? Cheese and rice. Breaker bar. Ooh, that looks like it feels terrible. <laughs> I'm waiting for a snap. There it is. The snap you've been waiting for. Ugh. There's not a nut on the other side, is there? No, it's just threaded in the star. You got that wire loose up top, so it should slide right out because it doesn't have headers. I don't know what was in it. Usually only been two on ones I parked on. That one's for the bell housing. It is moving still. So. Oh. There you go. Just an interference fit. Yeah. Oh, you gotta pull the motor out though to get the starter out. Not funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh uh. This is one of those puzzles. I don't like puzzles. Oh, oh. So this is permanently jumpered here. That's how that works. It's permanently jumpered from here to here. A lot of corrosion, but I don't know if that's, see how that is it permanently jumped? And this one comes down in here, which is green. We need a starter test bench. We do. Green means go. Well, there we go. Let's put it back on. Is that like a flat strap? I think so, yeah. Disappears down inside there. Well, where's your test bench at? Where right over here by your pink cup. What's gonna twist off? Oh! Uh-oh. Ooh. Once I break that, it's game over. Yeah, I think that connection looks pretty good, actually, if you ask me. Oh, it's twisting that strap, too, ain't it? Yeah. Well, it's got a rebuild tag on it. Or some kind of tag. It did until I wiped it off. Thanks for that. Yep. I don't see why those guys buy those eight-foot-long toolboxes. It's going to fit more crap on them. Now it's just going to work, right? You know who just went home? The guy who could fix it? The starter guy. Oh. 
here. This point usually fixes them. Huh. I just did that from the start. I will start like crazy. It's engaging the. Yeah. That works. Put your finger in there. Okay, hang on. Let me put my finger in there. Ready? Yep. Let's try it again just for fun. Just for fun. Just for fun. Sometimes I wear the stretchy pants just for fun. Sometimes you wear stretchy pants. It's for fun. Fixed. I am the smartest man alive. <laughs> I am the smartest man alive. How about a really smart thing to do and just cut that fuel line now so we don't suck up a bunch of that? Well, no, garbage. that's what I mean. She'd either cut it off or even take this off. Well, how about you just do it instead of talking about it? It's your car. I'm the employee. Look at this. I'm the employee around here. I can just do it, I'm told. I hope you get covered in crappy old gas. I do too. It's my favorite. Yeah. It's your favorite col cologne. <laughs> Is he doing it right, Duff? Gosh, you're a swamp donkey. Ooh. Now. And snap the fuel pump right off the block. No. Rotten hose break every time. Now all we need to do is get a chunk of three ace hose. We're wow. Ready. We're ready to go. Brilliant. So I guess my first thing to do. Let's set it on the ground and see if it turns over and has spark yeah, first. Yeah, that would be a good idea too. Because I'm not much good with the old Dura spark. That'll work. When you always do, work. Yeah, when you have keys. I don't know how to hot wire one. Well, to the coil. Oh, okay. Aren't you glad we brought him with so we can just lean on the car? Well, I'm doing everything. <laughs> Why don't you start doing something? Did you take the nut off that side of the solenoid? Nope. Straight here, though. Oh, phew. I didn't know where ever we were going to find another 3 ace coarse thread nut. Should I throw it on the floor just to give you something to do? No. No. Scalpel. Doctor. 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 Oh, doctor. You don't want to give me the right size? Nope. Okay. Just checking. Where's our 916s at? Yeah, the one that I actually need. I don't know. <laughs> when people don't put them back on the rack, it drives me nuts. <laughs> well, I suppose you need the honors. Honors? It's your, it's your car. Could be yours. You're driving it home. Oh, that's right. I gotta drive this home tonight. Did you want to tighten both of them up? Jeez. Oh, no, I'm good with one. I'm good with one. Well, that feels good and cross threaded. Excellent. Now. Ooh. Crunchy. <laughs> Things are making noises. We got smoke. Smoke. Smoke out of something. Well, that noise went away. We Fixed should be it. Good to go. Oh, we're definitely ready to just put gas in the carburetor. Uh, I think we better check for spark. <laughs> Boy, you're all you're just Mr. I don't even have, I bet we don't have power to the coil. We probably don't actually. Dumb, dumb. Probably not. We should probably find, oh, there it is. I found this spark plug wire that's not hooked up. What's that? Spare parts? Breather. Oh, we don't need that. Not really, but. This thing's from the vintage of all of the vacuum hoses. Ooh, scotch clips. 
Oh, this plug must have been bad. So they scotch clipped it on both sides to just bypass the plug. Oh yeah, just run a new wire, jump through there. <laughs> Fixed it. So we're gonna take this jumper wire, hook it up to the positive side of the coil, and the positive side of the battery, and hopefully the Ford DuraSpark agrees with it. Before we crank it over, we're gonna go underneath and unhook the shift linkage, so, well, it's gotta be in park. Oh, we're good to go. We'll just leave it in park. It'll be fine. But at some point, we're gonna have to figure out the shift linkage and the steering and the ignition source so that we can do donuts. We could do burnouts without a steering column, but donuts, we're gonna need it. What are you doing? Look at the keys. Oh. You ever seen Terminator 2 where he dropped the sun visor down? No, I missed that one. Are we learning yet? Try those. Probably just a couple of four more. They usually got them grouped. Oh, are you kidding me? What? First one. This thing's not hooked over there now. The first key I tried works. This one. Liar. I'm dead serious. I just pushed it in. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> what? Okay. Try it again. Did we lose it? Oh, I can hear the spark. Oh, we're golden. I can hear it jumping in the cap. All right. Well, I guess we're going to set up the uh, tailpipe cam and watch whatever comes out of the tailpipe. You can't keep that key. I'm going to need that back, though, before you, oh, I know. I just... before you leave tonight. This might do damage to your cylinder and your steering column. <laughs> I'm try lightening it up a bit. The whole column might fall off the dash. Too much. Good thing I saved all them keys. I guess. Just go turn this stinking key. All right. Oh, the door buzzer even works with the key in the ignition. How cool is that? Not very cool. Really? Yep. Clear. 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 Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to need to uh, fix this spark plug wire that has been chewed off by the mices. Oh. And hook this one up to the spark plug that's laying. Oh, we got a couple. We got a couple that we're gonna have to uh, address. Oh, they got shortened unintentionally. Look what I found. Imagine that, huh? Don't. Yeah, this, this is the one time so we don't screw up the firing order because I don't speak fluent overhead bell Ford. Oh, it's back here. Don't have much choice. You do this one first, or are you doing that one first? Same firing order as the GM, right? No, Ford is different. Right there. Ford is silly. And they actually have multiple firing orders. For the same minute? Yeah. 351 is different between HO and none. Yeah. Oh, these wires off a of 390 should work. Ford on Ford action, the way it looks. Looks like they're all the same length here, so. Look at that. Who says parts don't interchange on Fords? We just put 390 plug wires on a 460. Try it again. May as well. Why not? I just can't wait for that trend to just start shooting you all over the face. Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. Oh. Alright. Again? No. Okay. I mean, I, I think we proved our point. Except for we're going to have a giant vacuum leak here and wherever that. Brake oh. booster vacuum. Oh, there's the. Oh, that's a big T. Oh, so we just put a bolt in that and we're good to go. The brake pedal is rock solid. Like, it doesn't move a fraction of a. Like, like it's, like it's frozen, stuck? Yeah. Oh, not like the brakes feel good? No, not like they work good, like they really don't work at all. No. Let's worry about vacuum leaks. Okay. And a radiator and a transmission that works. Let's, okay. Because, uh,. You know, we don't we need brakes when it doesn't move. That's true. It's just baby steps. One at a time. I'm fine with that. 
Was it, what movie is that? Uh, I was thinking about Bob. Is that the Baby Steps? Yeah. <laughs> baby Steps. Baby Steps? Okay, I'll go get you a three ace bowl. What are we gonna do for a radiator? Maybe they did unhook it and the mice chewed it. There's the freaking clamp. Oh, it's got coolant in it. That's a plus. Our fan clutch works, it will definitely be cooling. Hopefully our air conditioning works. How much debris came off the tailpipe? Not much debris. Oh man, should we just plug the one that goes into that whole thing? Could. Probably all this stuff, I suppose, yeah. This is like a Christmas tree of vacuum hoses and some of the fittings and hoses are rotted and busted. And so we might just plug this main one that goes to this log. I think that is a brilliant idea. You can say that again. No, I'm not. Dang oh, it. I got that one too. Freaking mice. Oh, like this was a buffet. Look at that. <laughs> Oil temperature or something, I suppose. Oil temperature? Oil pressure. <laughs> Used to the truck. Oil pressure, I suppose. All right, we're going to plug some vacuum hoses and go from there. Where, did this, where was this one at? Right there? Yeah, that one oh, broke off here. I think we just put a plug there and then a plug because I don't know. I don't want to open up any more cans of worms than we got to. Is that bolt big enough? I need a half or seven sixteenths. Good enough for what we're using that for. All right, here's the deal. We need a radiator for this thing. And digging through everything in the yard, guess what we found? 1970 Torino GTO Leland. Nobody will give us 1500 bucks for that thing. It's crazy. We were just talking about how if that thing was a 70 Charger or a 70 Camaro or a 70 Chevelle or even a 70 Mustang, that thing would be gone. But because it's a freaking Torino, nobody wants it. Granted, it's in rough shape, but we're going to steal a radiator on that thing. It looks like it's pretty much a direct swap. So, and it was only held in with a ratchet strap, and there's no fan to get in the way. So, super easy to grab out of there. So, I'm going to go to grab that quick. Mope our madman's out there hanging out in the dark. And uh, we'll get her slammed in there. Hopefully, we'll be spinning some tires yet tonight. Burning the midnight oil? Yeah, burning the midnight oil. Good thing the golf cart's got headlights. If you want to own yourself a 1970 Torino GT, hit us up, mortskirepair at gmail.com. Oh, if you want to own a 1974 Mercury, hit us up. Price and availability in the video description. It's down there at the bottom. Glad we don't have six feet of snow like last year. What are you doing? Snooping. Stay out of there. Snooping. Oh, good old Leland. <laughs> so where did what did you steal this out of to put it in here? I feel like it was in the car. Oh really? Yeah. I don't know. So if we're saving coolant, you should do your side first. Oh yeah, that's right. I was gonna grab a catch pan, Greta, just for you. Mm How -hmm. oh, dare you! Too much is there? Mm, not too bad. Not too good. Not too good, not too bad. He's very nice. Loosen, don't worry me. Well, didn't catch much. No, we caught it all. Oh, that's all of it. I mean, yep, there pretty wasn't, good you got all of it. There wasn't a lot in there. We caught it all because we're going to use it. Looks clean enough to use. We better put the hood back on Leland for we put her up for the winter. Like it was made for it. You gonna put that hose on there? Or no, I'm fine. Stare at me. I'm just gonna stare at you. You're so good looking in this light. We are off. What's holding it? Oh, there's a pad down there. No. This hose is too small. How is a 460 hose smaller than a Galdang Cleveland? Freaking Fords. Ah, oh, seemed like such a good idea. I'll hook up my end. <laughs> that one's too big. Minus the kink, you know, it's pretty all right. 
that one out there had an adapter on it though, remember? That had another peel down here on it. Wonder if we need that hose. We should three quarter. We'll take that, we'll take that hose off of the car out there. Because that one had another joint down here. Remember it had hose clamps down here too? Yeah, it had a heater. Yeah, with a probably a junction or whatever in there. We should three quarter, we'll see if this one out. Yeah, radiators out, full of coolant. We didn't hook the tranny lines up. I don't know why, but they're looped. Good enough. Uh, we had to shorten the top hose, and then the bottom hose we had to use about seven eighths of Leland's, and then just a little stub of that because the big block water pump was bigger than the 351 Cleveland's water pump, but the 351 Cleveland's radiator was bigger than the 460. So. We refuse to use flexi hoses at least. So we got that going for us. Inline heater is our splice. Now we gotta hook up a fuel system. So, I mean, it's, it is a boat, so we might as well use a boat tank. Yeah, let's put a ratchet strap on that. Yeah. Or a zip tie. Zip ties are pretty good. No. Nope, not a zip tie. We're above that. Oh, wow. We're high class. No, no, no. Oh. That ain't going nowhere. Where are you going? Nowhere. <laughs> He's going nowhere. Where are you going? Nowhere. Can't get the hood shut now, but watch me. What's bothering me? Oh. We have to get the hood shut. Oh, so much better. Look at that. Brand new. Alright, can we lift it up and hook a fuel line up? Don't trip over my Jeez. Why don't you go put that right behind me? Fuel line's hooked up, now we just gotta mount our boat tank. Right to the fender. Dang damn it. Why didn't I grab one with the shortest hose? It just came in. All right. If only we had somebody around here who could set up a ratchet strap. Yeah. I'll call Mojo. Mojo would use rope. He's from that vintage. Oh, that vintage, huh? Where are you going to hook this so we can shut, close the hood down? Hmm. Tie down extraordinaire. Brilliant. Brilliant. Here, you just stay there. What are the odds that uh, electric or that mechanical pump still does pump things? Well, prime it and find out. Oh, we're gonna prime it first? No, with this. That's the electric cheap. one. Why? It's a smarter way to do it. Fuel tank secured. We ran the electric pump. Don't see any leaks, so it should be primed. Now we'll see if it pumps gas on its own. Give her the beans. Old man noises. You want to go toss around the pigskin there, Dad? Can you please drive us to the water park, Dad? There you go. We're running after sitting for 33 years. Not bad. Freaking idols. Can't believe it. No smoke. Power steering does whine. Fords. It might be low. Gauges? No dummy lights on? No, no. Man, that fan moves some air. Oh, yeah. No, I'm talking about the engine. Oh, she sounds good. She's cammed. What, six cylinders? It's fine. I wonder if we got some other plug wires that are burned off. doesn't have a wire on it. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> how have I, how have I never completely missed the spark plug wire? 
Yeah, we don't know how Ford. I think Ford goes Let's one, see. two, three, four. It's missing here. It's missing here. The, it's missing there. The, oh, the, and it's missing down here, but that's. The mice took the whole dang wire. Looks like somebody borrowed that, so we'll grab a new one. Oh, that seatbelt buzzer is terrible. But we have keys, so it's worth it. That's awesome. Good thing I put those spark plug wires back. That's why I didn't notice because it wasn't sparking because it wasn't even there. Mm -hmm. The manifold's warm. There we go. The mice completely carried that one away. Huh. <laughs> Weird. That's a to-go box. I'm gonna get out of the way. No, I'm fine. All right, let's check this master cylinder. While Carson kicks stuff around back there, and makes noise. Hey, one reservoir's full. One out of two, that's, that's half. Good. That's a good one too. Yeah. There we go, should have brakes. Except for the pedal's completely stuck, but. Minor detail. Other than that. Sissy pants says the brakes are I, stuck. You wanna force it, you go right ahead. I don't care, I'll oh. force it, doesn't matter to me. It's not a good car. It's not a good spot for that. It's a perfect spot for that. Duff doesn't have much faith in the old Merc. Oh, that buzzer's terrible. Here we go. Oh, fixed it. Go. Feels good. That kind of. Uh oh. It's returned, and I was just worried about it sticking down. I don't know. Yeah, see if it'll go down. Dan, I wanted to hook a horn on him. It's all cruise buttons. Where's the horn at on this stupid thing? Is it the horn ring itself? Or the, I don't know. Silly Mercury. Just want to hook the horn. I think it's in this ring. Probably not. It, they just never had horns back then. Sixty thousand one hundred and ninety. Oh, now somebody's ready for a ride. Power windows? Uh, no go. That side? No. Nope. I'm guessing seeing how they're hanging out of the door. That's probably the reason. Seats are nice though. Armrests? Oh yeah. Headliner? Not so nice. Oh, she's a bro hammer. Oh yeah. Oh. Woo! What are you doing? Nothing. You're ruining my car. Nothing out though. There's a vacuum all day here. Wait a minute. Turn off. Yeah, but I don't know if that's sucking or not.
start choking it out here if you have come on. You see this line going back behind the head? Down, down, uh, down there. Wonder if that goes that booster down there, owner that oh, second okay. booster. I don't think that thing's opening. I don't think the thermostat's opening. It's hot, but there's no pressure in it. Well, the light inside's on on the dash, so she's a little warm. So we're gonna shut her down and maybe take a look at the thermostat. Is that top hose warm? It's hot, but there's no pressure at all in it. Oh. So that's what I'm thinking, that thermostat's not opening up. Well, all the messing around I've done, I don't think I've had a Fox thermostat on anything for a long time. Yeah, that should be really pressurized. There's nothing there. Go ahead and just take that hose off and reach around in there. 220, not bad. Yeah. Well, our patch down there is holding. Yeah, I bet that thing's stiff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Weird, man. 68 degrees. How can that be? 71. Take that cap off. Hold on, let me step back. Look at this, the headlights work. Yeah, I heard the headlights on. Oh. I had to open the door, but I got the headlight door. This one might have worked, Shh. except it's a pretty... You could hear the vacuum hissing. Oh, man. Or something. Yeah, the uh, taillights are even working. Oh, yeah. Good to go. License plate must have been in the old bumper. Apparently, I didn't get that as part of the auction. Yeah, right. Oh my word. Try the other one. Gall dang it, they both work. This thing's this thing's gonna be ready to cruise main drag. Oh mer cruiser. Weird. Ice cold, ice cold, ice cold, ice cold, burn your hand. Oh that is hot. Run your hand, start at the bottom of the radiator, just work your way up. It's like half the radiator's plugged. Did it have, did it have water? No, it would have thought ouch. <laughs> It's burning my forearm and my fingers are on the bottom. Oh dang it. But it was nice enough today that it... If there, well, there's antifreeze in it. Yeah. And antifreeze came out the bottom and the top. It's not like it was didn't get mixed up and uh -uh. there's a sludge of ice in there. It's weird. Can't need to be belched and burped, I don't think. Why would it just be hot? Don't do this at home, kids. Maybe the poor guy just needs a few gallons of coolant. Did it suck it all down? But there's coolant in the bottom hose. Oh, don't get your fancy fuck hose. Oh, she's thirsty, eh? Uh, yeah. A lot thirsty. I thought that wasn't much. It didn't seem well, like I mean, some of the block. Well, which either was so. I suppose that was probably two and a half gallons. Suppose we put in it, plus what was ever in the block. 
a real big radiator. Definitely ain't big enough for a 460. We just got it hot to seat the rings. That's the only reason we did that. Mm-hmm. See how much better it runs? Real good. Woo! One of these, oh yeah, I think it was this one. There's something. We're seeing something about a ticket inside about it being towed. So, oh, like, so I wonder if he didn't. Somebody got it towed and then this guy bought it at a impound auction. Could be. <laughs> the guy probably went, $50 fine ticket. I'm not paying that. You can have the car. 91? Yeah, yeah. this was a 20 year old car. Yeah. We're going to have to weld up the diff and put some studded snow tires on it. Put a chain around the frame hanging off the back and the front for when I go in the ditch, somebody's gonna pull me out. Like the mail carriers. <laughs> well, these rotten bias flies, they should get pretty good traction. Are they? Yeah. I'm guessing this is gonna assist in the heating issue. I would think. It can't can hurt. I still can't believe that because that bottom hose had, had coolant, so that was. How come it was hot on the top side and then none of Well, the yeah, the heat, I suppose, the steam or whatever, but, you know, if that block was a fourth to a half full and I put two and a half gallons in it, and now you've put what? Two, two gallons? Two gallons, so. Yeah. So many of like, well, this son of a gun, that thing gets bound in there. You fixed your vacuum leak? Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's more. Uh, I've lost the radiator, Cap. Oh, what a day. Lost the radiator, Cap? Yeah, it was in the rag. I picked it up and went tink. It's like, oh, okay. oh, it's right there. In the fan in the belt back here. Oh, it's a Parker. It's a good one. It didn't even steam when I took it off. <laughs> Initiate transmission test. Instantly roars to life. Not gonna touch the throttle, he says. Famous last word. <laughs> I don't have any action over here. Oh. Put her in low, low. Hmm. Where is the dipstick? You dipstick. Way down here in the corner. On the, oh, on this side. Yeah. Yeah, that is not an ideal spot for a dipstick, Jimmy. Weird, because isn't that when you're supposed to check it? Well, I was going to say, it should be running when you check it. Uh, it's not on the stick, so who would have guessed? I got sucked down. <laughs> How many beers have you had? Hello, fishies! Uh, now, is that Ford transmission fluid? Yep, it's definitely uh, Type F, it says right here. Boop, 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 boop. All right, now try it. We just dump it in until it goes. Trying. Is yours turning? Oh, weird. Forward. All the spinach. Well, of course it does. It's a Mercury. The Bismarcky don't mess around. for trouble. And this is when something bad happens and something explodes. What'd you say, 150? 150. Yeah, park worked until it didn't. Yep. <laughs> leave the door open just because it sounds so nice. Oh, you know what's bad for your teeth? Bricks. Bricks. No, it's what's... That's what it is. It's what's red and is bad for your teeth. What's red and bad for your teeth? Oh. Bricks. Yeah, well, we have basically zero bricks in the back, but I guess that's fine. That's perfect. 
Yeah, that dipstick. Oh crap, I forgot that. Ramp truck has got a 460 in it. I do have a 460 in the yard. I drove it. I moved it out of the way to get this out. Oops. That's when you know you got too much junk. When you forget about the 460s the you got laying around. I'm gonna say this dipstick doesn't want to go back into place and uh, I'm fine with it because it's not gonna burn my hand, but we got it. Don't give up here. Mama didn't raise no quitter, not a punk quitter. No alternator, but we don't need an alternator where we're going. Oh my gosh, that's so many vacuum hoses. <laughs> Are you suddenly in the mood for spaghetti too, or is it just me? No, because you only like spaghetti because you think of that uh, movie. Seven. The hounds. What's oh. the, the, the dogs? When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie. Turn the key on once. I want to see what this magic switch over here does. I got the magic switch. Don't try turning it over. Okay, turn it off. Key on. What the French? <laughs> Maybe somebody bypassed it. We interrupt your regularly scheduled shenanigans to bring you this Mortski Minute brought to you by Mortski.com. Go check out Mortski.com for all the useful things that you probably never knew you needed, but you do. We got caps, we got sweatshirts, we got beans, we got can koozies, we got magnetic screwdrivers, we got decals, we got banners, we got everything. If we don't got it, you don't need it. This Mortski Minute is discussing this little switch that I found underneath the hood that you can push. That switch is a seat belt interlock starter override. In 1974, it was federally mandated by the NHTSA. You don't know what that is. It's the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. These guys mandated that every car has to have an interlock. And what that interlock is, is you get two sensors. You got one in your seatbelt retractor and one in the seat. And not only is it in the driver's seat, it's also in the passenger seat as well. So if you've got somebody in the passenger seat or a bag of groceries or a dog or a cinder block, or a case of beer, it's gonna set off that switch. So you need to buckle in that case of beer or your car will not crank over. There's a lot of issues with this. And so as an override, they have this safety interlock override button underneath the hood. How this all kind of originated was Lee Iacocca at Ford, his engineers brought it to him that this safety interlock was something that they could uh, maybe implement. And the Washington people, the government, the NHTSA was getting after Detroit's automakers saying, you guys got to make cars safer. And this was Lee Iacocca's brilliant idea to bring to the NHTSA, which with in only a few months time in 1973, they federally mandated for all cars built in America in 1974. There's a lot of issues with this. That's why it's a one year only thing. You don't hear a lot about it. There was a lot of recalls, a lot of overrides, a lot of Anyway, one year only deal, 1974. Like I said, the issues were that electronics were in their infancy in 1974. I mean, electronic ignition was a brand new thing back then. And if they couldn't figure out electronic ignition, then how were they gonna figure out have two interlocks, one with the seat and one with the seat belt retractor? Anyway, it was to get people to wear their seat belts more often. So let's diverge, divulge? Let's dig into seat belts. Seat belts were invented in 1959 in the automotive industry. They, they originated in the aircraft industry. And in 1959, Volvo, that's right, super safe cars, the Volvo made them standard, free. They didn't, it wasn't even an option. Seat belts were an option in cars before then, but Volvo made it free. They had a three point seat belt in the Volvo P V544. So Volvo was kind of the originator of this. And then in 1968, the NHTSA mandated that all cars have seat belts in the front. Uh, these kind of started as lap belts and they went three point belts, shoulder belts, all that good stuff. And it kind of evolved from there. As, as you remember the uh, early seat belts, you, know, you had to cinch them up tight and then they had retractors and they went over the shoulder. And then I think Chrysler was a big one. They had it like you had to hook the shoulder one to the main one and they were always kind of bundled up in the corner. I think GM maybe did it as well. And then remember like in the 80s and early 90s, like the retractors that ran up the uh, A pillar into the door, like the Ford Tempos had them. And I think like some of the Honda 
Civics and Accords had them, but those things were great. And then they would get like stuck in a spot and just do, 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 chatter there and probably choke you and all kinds of great memories about those. But anyway, back to seat belts. So between the infancy of electronics, they only had a few months to get ready for this. They didn't do a lot of testing, all that stuff. It was basically a giant flop. But it did, however, lead to a lot of great things. Uh, padded dash has already been invented and implemented before 1968. Uh, airbags came along down the line, both front, side airbags, my air compressor, completely unrelated. Uh, New York was actually the first to mandate seatbelt laws in 1984. New Hampshire is the last of the 50 states that does not have adult seatbelt laws. If you're if you're under the age of 18, they maybe allow you to make you have seatbelts, but uh, in New Hampshire, you are not required to wear the seatbelt as an adult. This is according to the internet, so it could be wrong. Interestingly enough, in 1961, Wisconsin was the first state to require that all cars in the state of Wisconsin that are legally registered have seat belts in the front of the car. It wasn't mandated by Wisconsin that you had to wear them, you just had to have them in there, which maybe came from Kenosha. Isn't that where the uh, old Ramblers were made? I'm sure Ramblers all had seat belts. I think Ramblers were pretty safe cars. Probably not as safe as a Volvo, but pretty safe. Anyway, enough of me rambling on on the Mortski Minute about safety and seat belts and airbags and all that great stuff. And now back to your regularly scheduled shenanigans. Oh, we got to show them the ABS action this thing's got. Check this out. I don't think this is a 9-inch. It's got some uh, speed sensor. This wiring goes into the cabin of the car. So, I don't know why it's got a speed sensor on the rear end in 1974. But I bet it has something to do with the old freaking Kelsey Hayes brake booster action. You know what? This exhaust doesn't sound terrible. Oh, never mind. It uh, it got a lot lighter. I'm guessing uh, a lot of the exhaust comes out right there, judging by the clear spot on the floor. That U joint's fine. Uh, really? <laughs> oh, that's fine. Yeah. That'll run another sixty thousand. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I like uh. Ford would put these like I don't know it's like, it's like a vibration dampener I think isn't it? I think so I don't know. Just ah let's just throw a bunch of flat iron hanging out the back of the tranny and call her good for the weekend off Phil. What do you got going on? Going to the cabin? We don't have time to figure this out just throw some weight at the end of it. Call her good. It's a big car. We need some Uncle Buck references. That's mm. Uncle Buck's muffler probably looks like that. You get, <laughs> boom! boom. I wonder if that thing's plugged up or that just happens to be the path of least resistance there. There's some most stuff back there. Yeah, I saw some stuff back here. But the uh, majority of it's right around your left foot. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's enough fun for a night. Time to enjoy the adult beverages. Burnouts during the daylight. Hopefully. I wonder who did that on the gas tank, though. It looks fairly fresh. Huh. That's weird. Must have been the last guy. <laughs> Uh huh. Came out of the shop this morning. A tire's flat. Can't have that, so we're gonna pop that sucker off, put a tube in it real quick so we can hopefully do some burnouts in this pig. The old uh, Empco, ready to rock. Duff's up there observing all of this, aren't you? I'm gonna put the old uh, sprint car engine away for a rainy day. That thing's ready to go. Mojo's working on an oil pan for this 283 because that one's spliced and cut and freaking terrible, ain't it, though? Anyway, Duff noticed 
And we should probably tie up that fuel pump and fuel hose. So good thing there's a ratchet strap right here we can just zip tie it to. So let's do that quick. You're always thinking about safety, Duff. I appreciate that about you. I got to say, that's what I appreciate about you. Is that what you appreciate about me? Since we're not hacks, we're gonna trim the ends of those zip ties off. The whole dust just supervising away over here. This is a stock 307 oil pan we're gonna put on that 383. He's making sure Mojo cleans it up right. This thing is so pitted on the outside, just looks like sandpaper. The inside's like brand new, so good enough for the girls we go with. Mojo's gonna clean her up a little bit more and slam it on there. Wire wheel away. You like that thing, don't you? Look at that, he's prepared. He's even got a second battery. He's gonna be here for hours. <laughs> we'll get you a steel toothbrush. All right, I think we're ready to test the brakes out on this thing. What do you say? Hopefully the hood closes with my fuel tank latch, but if we got to address that, we can. I'm sure we can find somewhere to hook that thing. We don't need a hood latch anyway. I was just setting this thing on the ground and looking at the lug nuts, or lack thereof. We should probably address that if we're going to be doing some burnouts and high-speed runs. Three I can deal with, but you can't have two in a row that are missing, so we'll pop that guy off and put it there. Or there. Either way. That should be good. And on the front, two is an absolute no-no. But if you're going to have two, at least space them across from each other. Don't put them right next to each other. So I think we're going to grab a couple more and put on that wheel. I mean, definitely not worried about that tire, but we don't want the whole thing coming off. Oh, man, our undercoating's coming loose. Low mileage. What do we, what do we say? 60,000 on the odometer. Look at this giant... Uh, Remember these things when you turn on the blinker, this one would start blinking and this thing just illuminate the whole area and just light her up. Good times. What a time to be alive, 1974 in the boat era. All right, lug nut time. I could steal some off the other side, but we're not complete hacks. Okay, maybe I'll do that if I can't find some. See if we can find some, what are these, half inch? Yeah, we should have some half inch. If not, we'll have to hit up the lug nut guys and get some new inventory. Look at that, we're putting all five on. If you're gonna lose a wheel, you wanna lose a rear. You definitely don't wanna lose a front. I'm not sure I mentioned this, but I'm pretty sure these cars are five on five bolt pattern, same as like a 71 to 76 GM full size car, or what, 71 through at least 87 two wheel drive Chevy pickups, and I think all the way up to 98, so. Ford stepped out of their realm here. I think the uh, big Thunderbirds of this vintage had five on five as well. Your worthless information of the day for you. For some reason, half inch fine thread lug nuts seem to come in three quarter inch hacks and 13 sixteenths hacks. Why? I don't know. We're all of the seven sixteenths are pretty much three quarter, unless they're some aftermarket chrome jobbers. Oh man, when they schmucked up this side, they knocked a couple pieces of trim off. Dag damn it. wonder if they knocked a bumper off at the same time too. Probably not. Now we're missing some lower quarter trim here too, I believe. Maybe there wasn't any at the bottom. Who knows? All right, all 20 lug nuts, ready to rock. Oh, I was gonna say, hood doesn't quite go on the second latch. So we might have to redo that. And then we got to clean this windshield off too because we got to see what's happened ahead of us. What happens behind us, that's in the past, but ahead of us. Apparently I was lucky bidder number 33 on this. Oh, how did this thing hang on for two years and then just fall right off? Oh yeah, South Dakota used to have vehicle inspections. That one's a few days old. It's got a 198 on it, so it was sometime in the 80s she passed inspection. Everybody's all about their Stanley mugs. We're just lucky we got Stanley ratchet straps. <laughs> Hopefully we can just slam the hood down and it'll pinch that in, be fine. Okay, maybe not. 
That license plate ain't going anywhere, is it? Got the slot there, holding the license plate. Real good. I guess I never did check brakes. Oh, you're gonna ride in the back? Come on up here. Come on. That a boy. Come on, baby. You can put a little gas in it. Put the elbow on the uh, brake booster. So maybe we got brakes. I got the power seat to slide back with a little assistance. Tranny's a little slow. Power steering feels good though. Brakes work. Power windows do not work. And uh, this thing didn't smell so bad yesterday after it had been outside and cold, but she's a little ripe. Now that she's up to uh, room temperature. Oh, she spins the tires in mud. It's got all the power down. I'd roll your window down for you. Oh, it's, it's trying. You hear it squealing over there? That's about all you're gonna get though. Man, this was like the pinnacle of amazingness in seats. These things are like riding on a lazy boy. Riding on air. They just need like to be heated and have massagers in the back. And then it'll be right up town. Is that a power mirror? Oh, it's not, well it's power, but you can, it's not power. It's, it's remote, it's a remote mirror. I looked it up, just did a quick Google search and it looks like this thing, and don't hold me to it. Like 212 horsepower. 460 cubic inches. Not a good time for the horsepowers in 1974. Ready to take it out on the highway, Duff? But I think it was like 345 foot pounds of torque, so that's good, right, Duff? Not as good as that Catalina. Ready, Duff? Alright, here we go, Duff. Ready? Kind of the same color, but not really. All right, here we go. I wonder what people think when they meet a car on the highway that has a fuel tank strapped to the front bumper. Shift, please. Shift! Speedometer works. Okay. So we, we might not have a high range. We got second gear though, because I shifted in her first there. Oh, she gets sideways, Duff! There's first. Shift her to second manually. There's second. This car's just freaking flowing. All right. We haven't done the railroad tracks in a while. I mean, I don't know that we've ever jumped these railroad tracks, but. Yeah, definitely don't go into third. Maybe she needs some more transmission fluid. All right, we're doing the tracks at 45, Duff. Get in the fetal position. Get your seatbelt buckled. Da -da 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 -da. Long about now, I bet that boy wishes he had a parachute. Ooh. Hood popped a little bit. Might have to uh, check that. But floated right over it. These cars are so good. These cars are still affordable. Uh, I, I don't remember what Dalton paid. I think he posted it on Instagram or something, but I think he got like a 38,000 mile one. Still had the original tires. I wanna say he paid like, is that our tire blowing? I mean, that wouldn't surprise me. I think he paid like, yeah, I heard it that time too. Five grand? Oh, that's the that's the backfire out the exhaust. Never, never worth making the neighbor's horses run. Shots fired! Hey Terry, I did I did my first test pop. Anyway, what I was saying, I think he paid five grand for one of these. Like a really, 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 really clean one. What do you get for five grand anymore? Obviously he had to put tires on it. He's probably gonna have to do brakes. Anything that's rubber is dried up, but what's five grand anymore for a nice car? This one is not nice. This one would make an excellent 460 donor for somebody. Other than it needs a tune-up. 
and uh, the transmission may not go into drive. But hey, you can figure that out. It's definitely not hitting on all eight. So there's that. But it's got torque, right now? Hang on! Please don't be tranny. Oh yeah, that's tire spinning. That is tire spinning in the mud. Yeah, she don't wanna. She don't wanna catch third for some reason. That is a shame. Cause uh, we're gonna need third gear to get all the fuel economy out of the 460. So if you wanna own this thing, I do have a title. If you wanna fix this thing up, you are a brave soul. I'm sure it's gonna need a fuel system, complete tune-up. Gonna need exhaust, gonna need tires, gonna need brakes. The interior is not the worst, but she needs some love. Hit us up, price and availability in the video description, Morski Repair at gmail.com. We're trying to keep the active listings of cars we got for sale at Mortski.com, but we're not doing a very good job of maintaining it. Pookie got a new cap? Yeah, it looks like it's in rough shape, though. You didn't even see it. You're fogging up your window over there, pal. Oh, getting it! God, these are good cars. I kind of want a really nice one now. I want a little, well, I want a GM. I want like a 71 to 76 GM. Bulls, Pontiac, CAD, Chevrolet. Full size, though. Big car. One day we'll find one. All the Derby Gar guys wrecked them. You ready for some more railroad track action? Oh, I did it way too soon. This is a good one. Holy buckets. Woo! Barely even notice it's there. Something, you smell that too? It's got an old crap handle. It is a hard top. That's pretty awesome. Oh yeah, the roofs, you can see daylight through the roof. Need a, need a little, little roof repair going on if you're gonna fix this thing. We're just DD Speed Shop and just get some vinyl and just go right over the top. Pretend like it's not even there. Maybe rivet some galvanized sheet metal right in place. What do you think about that, Dolph, huh? I think the windows need to roll down. It's, it's, get, it's getting warm out. Must need a valve job. That must be the popping going on back there. Thought maybe we'd have put enough heat into her yesterday. Oh boy, she is a sloppy mess. I think it got up to 48 degrees yesterday. The poor Mopar madman, he had to go home so he didn't get to uh, be part of this experience. I wonder if Bob's home. I wonder if he'll appreciate a nice burnout in front of his house. I'm sure he will. Cowboys! of a burnout rig with this uh the tune-up it spins the tires but that's about it i still can't smell the rubber over the uh the interior the sad part is this this interior is way better than most of our interiors i would probably put some new shocks in it too and i'm keeping my boat tank and my ratchet straps i will throw in the radiator for leland Unless we decide to put it in something else or somebody comes and buys Leland and wants the radiator. But this is the wrong radiator for this car. You're going to need radiator hoses. And I would probably just get the right radiator. Oh, it needs an alternator. Thanks for reminding me, Duff. Before we get too far from home and we run out of battery power, we should uh, turn around and head back home. Because we're currently running on battery power. Which is fine on points. Points seem like they just kind of keep running, but electronic ignition burns up a little battery power. And I am not going to touch the heat or the defrost or any of the above because there's definitely Mises that have inhabited the HVAC cabins. I think with a tune-up and some exhaust and some tires, this thing would be great for cruising to bingo. Up to the VFW, have a couple cocktails with the boys, but 5.30, be home by 7, maybe 8. Oh, we got you got to fix those hideaway headlights. I feel like that would cost a 
fortune to make them work with the mechanic or the, the vacuum mechanical stuff, but I would convert them to some type of electronic. I'm, I'm sure there's something out there. Because don't the Corvettes have hideaway headlights? And a lot of cars do. Just, just get a little squirrely. We lose a tire? We ain't lost a tire in a long time. But I think we lost one today. Yep. Yep. It's the one we just put a tube in. So there goes a $20 tube. Dang damn it. I don't even need to look. I just know. It's a 5 on 5 15 inch rim. They're sacrificial. We're uh, one, three, yeah, we're, we're four miles from home, so that rim is not gonna be in good shape by the time we get there. Dang, damn it. This is gonna be fun. This is why you don't run old tires, kids. Oh, don't run the quarter panel, that's the good. That's a good quarter. save us because it's probably not a good idea to go on the highway with this blown out tire. Why does the seatbelt dinger go off when the car is running and moving and the door is open? Oh, it's because it's a door dinger, not a seatbelt dinger. It's like riding a horse. Some reason is not on. Which 
is pretty amazing because there isn't even an alternator. You must have to have an alternator for the light to come on. That's how you fix your alternator light. Just do an alternator delete. safe for the camera or my arm so I'm gonna bring that back inside. The inside of that wheel well has to be spotless from the tread of that tire. Just rip off already! Tries. This looks like a good spot to wait for poop. Oh, stupid door buzzer. Oh, man, we knocked the park light out. Didn't screw up the quarter, though. I mean, that lip may be peeled out a little bit. She's a nice. She's a nice car. Did we get both tires or just one? Just one. This thing looks... Was that dent there before? Had to have been. We didn't back into nothing. This thing looks good sitting here though. A little dirt on her. A little steam. Oh, I bet this will fix it. We gotta open the vent on the fuel tank. We're good to go. I can see the house from here. You just gonna run home? Okay. Let's see what happens. I'll check to see if it starts first. Still got battery power. Barely. lights on just gotta get some air moving the uh, extra load of having a flat tire probably doesn't 
help the old heating situation. But it's not even really steaming that bad. You coming with or what? He freaking used to run, I think, six miles a day when I lived in town. We'd go go for a drive like this. So he was an expert at that time, but we're a little out of practice. It's been a couple years. But I mean, he still loves to run 15 mile an hour. He's walking away from us. So yeah, just living the dream. All right, yeah, we could just bonsai across that stubble field and make it home, but I guarantee this thing would stink out of sight and there's a couple of low spots between the A and the B and then we would have to go out there with something else to retrieve it and get that all muddy and just all around poor decisions. What a silly dog. Where is the pook? He said he was coming to get us. Find a bird over there or what? Or something dead to roll in. All right, now we gotta see if we can round that dog up because he will run for days. Duff, let's go. Oh, you got my seat on, money. Tech tip of the day, uh, always open the vent on your auxiliary fuel tank so that it, so that your 460 doesn't suck it shut and starve itself of the fuel. And don't run garbage tires. Of course, the one time that I want to get onto the highway and not have any traffic, there has to be a car coming at 14 miles an hour. You think it's frowned upon to just take the ditch? Probably. And then it's uh, also more frowned upon to uh, get stuck in your own driveway. Oh dang it, did I wait this whole time and it's stupid pooky? Probably. It loves the highway at 45. And it's not even marking up the highway, so nobody will know be any the wiser. Made it! Barely. That's why that's that's why we blew a tire because we maybe jumped the railroad tracks. Ah, classic. I didn't I didn't want to drive down the highway with a blown tire. But since I had you blocking, I figured we were good. Thanks for showing up, snowman. I got a tire for you to fix. And it's the one I just fixed too. There goes a $20 tube. Aw, oh, son of a biscuit. Also, you gotta make sure to crack the vent on the fuel tank or it sucks itself shut and uh, leaves you on the side of the road. Oh, okay. Hey, at least you knocked all the rust off of this. Right? Yeah. This thing looks good, dirty. I mean, it pretty much matches your fleet. <laughs> it's still straighter. Yeah, you're not wrong. Well, right. looks good. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, dude. <laughs> My friends are poor. Oh, crapies. Oh, it's, yeah. it's the, the train stopped there. Yeah, it stopped. So I was coming down the road and I'm like, oh, this train's going, but they left that one open. Like, uh, what? How long did you sit and wait? Like, because I met like the first couple cars, you know, so I was sitting there waiting for it to go by until a whole mile one. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, there's like 10 cars left and it stopped. <laughs> Son of a. Oh, she's she is a beaut, Clark. It's a beaut, Clark. It's a beaut. <laughs> Uncle Buck would be proud. What do you think, Doc? Too sloppy to drag a jack out here. So we got the old telly handler. So that way it's not a two-man job. With the skid steer, you gotta have one person inside because it's it's unsafe to climb in and out. This thing easy to climb in and out. Anywho, we gotta put a tire on this thing. So. We're gonna do that. And then we'll wrap the video. Oh, you're so freaking swampy. That's what I hate about this time of year. All right, let's do this. See how bad I can cut my hands up with the uh, cords hanging out of that thing. Just kidding, I brought gloves. 
That tire's a trooper. Four miles it made it. Didn't even scuff up the rim. Sometimes I wish I only had three lug nuts holding on because I'd be 40% more efficient. Oh, come on. Yeah, you don't want me to get the hammer again, do you? So dirty. Oh, cheese and rice. There, take that sucker. Look at this hot rod. Whips, aluminum bumper, headache rack, mismatched tailgate. Whew. All right, let's go swap on a tire. All right, those things are absolutely miserable to dismount and it's five on five. And we have an abundance of those things for some reason. Like I said, they only fit two wheel drive Chevy pickups and Catalinas and a few other things, but we got more than we need. So I'm just gonna grab a hold of the stash and put on there because I'm not fighting with this thing any longer. Mountain tire sucks anyway. And when somebody absolutely shredded the tire, it's even worse. So I'm gonna go do some tire things. Conveniently, none that were in the car were five on five. What are you doing under there? We already checked that thing out. You're uh, trying to shake hands with danger down there. Here, shake hands with danger. Shake hands with danger. Look at that, Aaron. Oh, she's a Ward's Riverside WTO. She's ready for some WFO action, if you know what I mean. It's a radio. HR 70 14. Ooh. That's a rare rim, 14 inch five on five. That's probably off of like my Pontiac. Good spot for it though. Mismatched tires on the back. She's ready for more burnout action. All right, Uncle Buck is ready to go here. The Bismarcky, she called the the Buck Marky. Uncle Marky, I don't know. I know what we should call this thing, somebody else's i never noticed that window kind of curves in the middle to, almost comes to a peak yeah the trim makes it look like that anywho boss man says we got wabbits to chase and other things to do so that's about it for this thing so thank you very much for watching check out the site mortski.com get yourself some swag get yourself shirts Ball caps, we got the uh, grubby cap competition coming up, Cinco de Drinco. It is almost Valentine's Day. So get yourself a screw the flowers. I'm watching Mortski screwdriver. If you get it right meow, we'll get it shipped to you. And hopefully you'll get it by the Valentine's Day, depending on where you live. But yeah, probably, you got plenty of time. We got decals, we got banners, we got beanie caps, we got sweatshirts. Speaking of sweatshirts, I'm getting used to this. I mean, it's it's pretty bad when it gets in the 40s and us podunkers up in North Dakota are like, it's t-shirt weather, but it's definitely t-shirt weather. All right, we got Bull Hall and Peterbilt's on our way. So remember, doesn't matter how you get it done. If you get a Grand Marquis running for the first time in 33 years, so long as you're having fun. Big old bolts of spoon. Oh, it ain't a bull hauler. It's just a, oh, it's not even a Peterbilt. Freightliner? Swamp donkey, what are you doing over there? We got work to do. Leave those two pheasants alone that we got left. All right, on to the next one.
odds it still runs after that. Pretty good. You gotta set the key a minimum of four inches away, otherwise the buzzer goes off. Of course it runs. When was the last oil change? 58,133. 199. Ah, she's only got 200, or uh, she's got a thousand left on it in 30 years. I can't leave you without a good burnout, right? Or an attempt at a burnout at least. Maybe that is why that one blew on the test drive. We need a burnout pad around here. Anybody want to be a concrete sponsor? Burnout pad sponsor? That'd be great. This thing just smells like freedom. We've got this stupid building in the way on our burnout pad, Duff. Why'd you put that there? Money says the front tires just slide. Tech tip of the day, don't build a six foot apron, build like a 46 foot apron. Woo, she's hot Duff, she's hot. I like how it spins one and then goes the other and just doesn't know what it wants to do. She just wants to go. All right, back to work. All of that uh, grass in there might've been part of our overeating issue. That's not so good. What? That's false advertisement. I thought this thing was a merc. Now back to your really regularly scheduled shenanigans.